somebody put your hands together if you're sure that God reigns on high above every principalities and above every power come and put your hands together and make a joyful noise to Jesus he alone is worthy to be praised he's holy he's worthy he's mighty God will bless your holy name today come and put your hands together this week Bishop Nicholas Duncan Williams this morning. You are so welcome to church. It's good to have you with us. Amen. Service has started. Amen. According to Psalm 100 verse 4, let's enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And so do join me while we join the main service for our second service for today. Be blessed as you partake of this service with your praise and with your thanksgiving. Amen.
you are always good to us. If the Lord has been good to you in this house this morning, just put your hands together for him. Father, you are good. We we'll bless your holy name. Lord, we honor your name, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. You are your
preaching on Calvary, people of song. I'm in
Lift it up. 
Lift it up, lift it up. Oh, Father. Ah, oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. hands lifted up say heavenly father in the name of your son Jesus we have come from different works of life for an experience therefore let your word have a free course impact our lives change our lives do a new thing let yokes be broken. Let spells be broken. Let curses be repealed. Let your press go free. Let chains break. Let the captives go free. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered as we put our hands together. Hallelujah. Please take a minute and welcome one or two people to church. Then after that, clap your hands, shout and be seated. is very low energy. Put your hands together, clap your hands and say something. It's good to be back home. I know you didn't miss me, but I miss you. You know, you never know the importance of community and family until you are away from family and community. God never intended that man should be alone. God never created us to be a separate island. We created to be interdependent. Everybody needs somebody, irrespective of where you stand in society, the color of your skin, and what you possess or what you don't possess. You always need somebody. It's said that during the time of the pandemic and the shutdown all across the nation, that loneliness killed more people than the pandemic did. And so it's important that you recognize your need of others. It's a deception, it's pride, it's arrogance, and it's foolishness and ignorance to ever think that you don't need anybody. You're always gonna need somebody in life. As I travel across the nations, I was in Germany 
And I went to see at Lord Hitler's head office. And as I stood there and looked at his head office, where it all began, I realized that time changes. Time really does changes. And I saw the king of Munich, his palace. He had 137 guest rooms, 137 guest rooms. As I walked and I looked around all of this, I realized that men build, they rise, they fall. They move on and things they build stay as monument without the builders of it. But God is the builder of all things and he's always alive and real. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Put your hands together. Say something. Say something. And because of our meeting coming on on Saturday for all business, for all the business community and the professionals in the church, uh, I wanted to talk about the importance of community. Jesus said any kingdom or house divided against itself cannot stand. And I travel, as I travel across the Middle East, went to uh, some very, very powerful places in Dubai, Bujera and other places, to break my fast with some of the sheikhs and all that, the Ramadan. I saw how human beings are that simple, irrespective of wealth and money, that we are all humans, that money Power and wealth must not determine or distinguish you from someone else. That it doesn't matter how wealth, powerful you become, you must never lose your humanity. And it's saddening how we allow power, we allow money, wealth, position, influence to cause us to lose our humanity. As I was thinking, meditating, I was in my hotel in Munich, and the Holy Spirit impressed a scripture on my heart that I preached about 20 years ago, many, many years ago, on a message, and I entitled the message then, Rehearsing Past Victories. Why we seem to miss it whenever we face new challenges. And as I began to meditate and focus on the nations of our world, the unrest across the nations, the divisions in the United States between those political parties, the sense of uncertainty, the sense of uncertainty in Ghana's election and in the elections of the nations, 60 nations are having election this year across the nations. As I began to think through the unrest in the Middle East between Israel, Hamas, Gaza, and the present situation with Israel and Iran and Ukraine and all that is going on and how within 90 days a group of ordinary people who were so foolish about consequence stood up and sowed a seed of hatred and discord in Rwanda and within 90 days a million people died as the world folded their hand and stood by and watched men and women and children slaughtered in cold blood, doing nothing. Looking at countries like Celerio and Liberia, what happened? How human beings became like animals. And sitting and looking, observing history, I realized that for whatever reason, Ghanaians don't seem to appreciate the peace and the security we have. And these agitations and violent speeches and arrogant speeches and all these proud talks and speeches online are very dangerous. And men and women must be very careful, especially if you have children. You have to be very careful of your actions and your pronouncement because time will catch up with you. And you will never go unpunished when you become the reason and the cause for destructions and violence of others. You never go unpunished. It's just a matter of time. And the blood 
of innocent people will cry on your head and on the head of your descendants. So be careful. Be careful. As people think that their freedom of democracy and expression allows them to insult, to cause violence, to threaten, to hate, to put fear in others, I realize that all across the nations of the world, there is a sense and a feeling of agitation, unrest, restlessness, powerlessness, hopelessness. It's perplexity. It's all over the countries and the nations around. And this word of the Lord was impressed on my spirit, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10. Who delivered us from such great a death? Who does deliver? In whom we trust that he shall yet deliver? God is a God of deliverance. The God you and I serve is a God of deliverance. And when he delivers, he delivers to the uttermost. He just does not deliver one time. He delivers to the end. He delivers to the uttermost. Say, I hear you. I remember over 50 years ago, a young man in Bolgatanga, I had a strange accident. And in this accident, the truck somersaulted into the valley. So many people lost their lives. And I screamed, Jesus! And a hand picked me up and set me on my feet on the high road there at Bolgatanga, between the Bolgatanga High Court and Edujian Ficotes. I stood on my feet. How I came out of the valley up to today, I cannot explain. But I knew that there was an angel of the Lord that was sent to rescue and to deliver me. And I have never forgotten that deliverance. And whenever I face challenging times and difficult times, I say, Lord, remember, 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 and let that angel that came to deliver me from that terrible situation at Bolgatanga remember me one more time for good. And I remember how we were twins. I was a twin. And I was delivered through the angel of the Lord when they, they performed a DNC and took my twin out and left me in my mother's womb. The same God who delivered me then is still in the business of delivering today. Put your hands together, say something. You... Ladies and gentlemen, you must have faith. You must have the faith and the belief that the God you serve is in the business of deliverance, that he does deliver. One of the challenges we all face when we face new challenges is we forget past deliverances. But if he did it before, he will do it again. Put your hands together, say yes. So Paul here, Paul said, who delivered, does deliver, shall yet deliver. So it does not matter. It does not matter what is ahead of us. It does not matter what the enemy has intended or programmed or predicted. I came to announce to somebody, irrespective of the contradictions and the odds, and whatever is coming against you, whether it's political or financial, or spiritual, it doesn't matter what it is. The God that has kept you alive now, the God that has preserved you up to now, he's capable and he's able, he's able to yet deliver you from whatever is ahead of you. Put your hands together. Say something if you believe it. The Bible says in Hebrews 7, 25, that he's able to deliver us to the uttermost. He's able. He's able to save, he's able to deliver to the uttermost because he ever lives to make intercession. He has the capability, he has the capability, he has the power, he has what it takes to rescue and to deliver you irrespective of what is ahead of you. Say yes, somebody. The Bible said in Psalm 35 verse 19, he said, for many are the afflictions. He didn't say few, he said many. Psalm 34, 34, 19. He said, many are the afflictions. He didn't say few. But many are the afflictions, not of the wicked, not of the unrighteous, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. 
of those who do right by God and others. And yet, he said, but the Lord delivered them out of them. Underline the word deliver, deliver, deliverance, deliver. He's the God of deliverance. He will deliver and he can deliver and he will deliver. Put your hands together, say something. Most time people are of the view that if you are righteous, you shouldn't face anything, you shouldn't go through anything, everything should be beautiful, everything should be nice and quiet. It's a deception. It's a deception, I'm telling you. It's a wrong way of seeing things and looking at things. You go through a lot. The Bible says, for by much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. So the fact that you're a believer, you do right, and you take the stand for God, you will go through things. But... When the Bible says, but means the, it's not yet over. But means the enemy doesn't have the final word concerning your life. It, it doesn't matter what the enemy has said, what has been prophesied, and the dreams you've been having, God still has the final word over your life. Tell somebody, make no mistake, make no mistake. Make, God has the final word about my life, make no mistake. It doesn't matter what the situation looks like and what seems to be going on right now. God still has the final word. You believe it, put your hands together and say something. You know, they plotted, they plotted against Daniel and, and the three Hebrew young men and, and they believe that they had them where they want them to be. There, there come a time when people can so scheme and plot. And because a lot of people, God gives them time to see if they will repent. They get away with things, so they, they get to a point where they become so confident in themselves, thinking that they can always get away with everything. But it's not everybody you touch and you get away. I'm telling you. There come a time you touch certain people and you never go unpunished. It's just a matter of time. Tell somebody it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. I was telling them in the first service, I've seen, I've, seen, I've seen great people. I've seen the rising and the falling of great people in this country and across the nations. I've studied history. And I said to them, if you want to be humble in life, study history. Study history. As I look at Hitler's head office, standing there desolate, and I said, behold, the head office of the feared and greater Hitler who caused the nations to panic and people feared. The building is standing there, desolate, empty. And the great Hitler, it's gone. If you study and you look at the emperors of Rome, the emperors of Rome, and the Babylonian kings, and the Ahasuerus of the Persian empires, and the Alexander the Great, of Greece. Yes. And you look at Britannia ruled the waves, the British Empire. If you look at the history of the pharaohs of Egypt, the Gaddafis of Libya, the Saddams of Iraq, the Kwame Nkrumahs of Ghana, men have risen and men have gone. And God is still alive and has not changed. The Bible said some put their trusses in chariots and in horses, but we shall remember the name of the Lord our God. I don't know how you want to be treated and remembered by history. As I walked through Munich, they showed me this beautiful palace of the king of Munich. And it has 137 guest rooms. 137 guest rooms. I shook my head as I stood there and I said, Men have risen. Yes, and have fallen. And they've thrown great parties. And they've shown greatness, excellencies, display wealth and power, and the majesties of men. But when the moment came and the dust settles and the water found its level and the curtains were brought down, they had to depart and leave all their wealth and the display 
of their majesties and excellencies. It all ended. The flower faded and the word of our God stands forever. The flower fades, the grass withered, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I don't know what you are standing on, but I'm standing on Christ, the solid rock. All other ground is sinking sand. Put your hands together, say something. Hallelujah. He who delivered, does deliver, shall yet deliver. 2024 is the biggest year of election in the history of humanity. There's a lot of anxiety and a lot of unrest across the nations. A feeling of perplexity, powerlessness, and hopelessness. Yes. But those that put their trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. They shall never be moved. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes, sir. If you believe that, you can put your hands together and say something. The other day, David was at the backside of the desert and he was keeping the family sheep and there came a lamb, a lion and a bear and attacked the sheep full and took a lamb. And he went after the lion and the bear. I declare, you will go after enemies. You will go after fearful lions and bear. You will not be afraid of the enemy. You will pursue, you will overtake and you will overcome all and overcome all things. Say, I hear you. And so David pursued the lion and the bear, rescued the lamb from the mouth of the lion and the bear. And the Bible said the lion and the bear rose up against David and he smote them, delivered the lamb. It was a preparation. Whatever you are facing right now, God is preparing you for the bigger show. Are you hearing me, somebody? Oh, yeah, you're going through something right now and you think that is the end of it. No, 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 no. This is to prepare you for the real thing. Until you kill a lion and a bear, you can't face a lion, you can't face a giant. Are you hearing me? Tell somebody, God is preparing you for a giant, for a giant. Yes, sir. Yeah. You have been prepared for a giant. I remember I was telling them in the first service many years ago when I lived in America, was this young man, very, very gifted. As a matter of fact, it was Bishop James Ford. It was Bishop James who introduced him to me. <laughs> and he was so gifted. And I was moved by gifts. These days, gifts don't move me anymore. I appreciate gifts. But I realized that gifted people who are not accountable, number one, and who are not under an oversight, of spiritual authority are very dangerous people. And I, I introduced him to so many of my contacts in the United States. And because he was so gifted, he was hijacked by some of these powerful people I introduced him to. And at the time, some of them won't return my calls, won't talk to me, and I didn't know what I'd done wrong to them. For two years, I was literally rejected, and I had so many unanswered questions on my mind and this young man was really flying on my contacts. He became big and huge because of his gift. Without oversight, no accountability, very dangerous people. When people are gifted, don't forget what I'm telling you. We're accountable to anybody. Never forget what I'm telling you. I have learned this for 30, 47 years. When people are gifted, anointed, and are not accountable, and are not under anyone oversight, they are dangerous people. Very dangerous people. It's a matter of time. He died. He died prematurely. I, I didn't touch him, but he, he killed himself. He killed himself. And for two years, I went through this feeling of being undermined and being betrayed. And because he was a son, and I introduced him, I couldn't say any bad thing about him to these powerful people. So I have to endure the pain. 
I have to endure it. But God was taking me through a process to prepare me for, for a greater betrayal. For greater betrayals. And so when I faced some of those dangerous betrayers and giants, I, I had already slain my lion and my bear. So I was not bitter. I was not bitter at all. I was ready. I wasn't bitter. I had, I had regrets, but I was not bitter. I wasn't bitter because I understood that life is a process. And that if he delivered me from the lion and the bear, he would deliver me from the giant. Are you hearing me, somebody? There are people who want to face giants when they haven't killed a lion and a bear. Before you face a giant, kill your lion and your bear. And some of you are in situations right now, you think they are unbearable. You think they are difficult. They are not difficult like you think. God is preparing you for the real show. You have been prepared for the real thing. And you will confront it. You will face your fears. You will be preserved. You will not die. You will be delivered. You will have the upper hand. You will prevail. Put your hands together. Say something. You know, I told when I was a young preacher that after David had killed the lion and the bear, that was it. No. That was to prepare him for the giant. When he met the giant, the fear of a giant had been taken out of him by the lion and the bear. The lion and the bear took out of him the fear of a giant. Do you know what the present situation is doing to you? It's taking out of you the fear. It's taking out of you the fear of facing your giant problems. And in the day when you meet your giant problems, they will mean nothing because you've slain your lion and you've slain your bear. Put your hands together if you believe it. Say something. I was telling them in the first service that President Mandela one day got up and said to his security, I want to go out eat. And he said, take me to the restaurant over there. And they said, no, Mr. President, we can't do that. We have to go and sweep the place and everything before we bring you in. He said, forget it, just let's go. So they went. As they sat down waiting for their food to be brought to his table, he saw a gentleman sitting next to him. And he told the security, please invite this gentleman to join us on our table. They said, Mr. President, you can't do that. We don't know who he is. He said, don't worry about him. Let him come. So the man joined them. Wise eating, the man was very nervous. He was shaking throughout. After the lunch, President Mandela said to his security, why do you think this man was so nervous? And they said, Mr. President, of course he has to be nervous. You are the most powerful person in this nation. You're president. You can do a lot of things. And he said, no. That was not why he was nervous. And he said, when I was in prison, anytime I was beaten, and I was thirsty, and I cried for water, he was one of those who would stand on a chair and pee over my head and tell me to drink it. He never thought I would ever come out and become somebody. So to see me now as president, of South Africa with the kind of power I will and possess. He thinks I'm going to retaliate or do something to him. And that is, he, he, he's ne he was nervous because he started remembering all the evil he did to me. And then see, Mandela did nothing about it. He just let him go. He let him go. Because he had been through so much and have learned the power to forgive, the power to let go. And I make this quote all the time because to me, repetition is very important. President Mandela said, as I stand at the door to my freedom, I realize that if I don't leave behind my bitterness, my unforgiveness, and all the evil done to me by apartheid, I will walk through this door to freedom and I'll still be in prison. Turn to somebody and say, are you in prison? Yes, you can. You can be imprisoned by your past. You can live in the now and still live in prison. I have a lot of regrets in life, but I'm not bitter. I've learned never to be bitter 
For blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. I, I need my heart to be pure so I can experience God. I need my heart to be pure so I can see God. So there's no bitterness in me. I've been betrayed, thrown under the bars, used by the best and the foolish. And yet, I made up my mind never to be bitter. I made up my mind never to be bitter. Put your hands together and give him praise. Come with me and look at Daniel chapter 3. The God you and I serve is a God of deliverance. He delivers. Daniel 3, 17. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery fence. The word deliverance again, go ahead. And he will deliver us out of thine hand. Another deliverance king. again. They said he is able to deliver and then he will deliver. The God you and I serve is in the business of deliverance. And, and, and you see, the key here is understanding and realizing that even when the deliverance has not yet come, you must still believe him. There are things I'm believing God for that I haven't yet seen happen, but I still believe. I still have faith in God that I will see the deliverance of the Lord over certain matters and issues of my life. Put your hands together and give him praise. Amen? Yes, 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 yes. Look at Daniel 3, 28. Then the book at Nathan spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him, and hath changed the king's word, and yielded their body that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. So you are looking at few things here. Number one, who trusts in him? Tell somebody, trust him, trust him. Keep trusting, keep trusting. No matter what, you have to keep trusting. Amen? Yeah, you have to trust. Job said, though he slays me, yet will I, I'll trust him. I'll trust him. Though he slays me, yet will I trust him. Put your hand together and trust him. Oh, are you clapping? Are you clapping? And he changed the king's word. People can become so powerful in life where they believe that their word is law and what they say is a decree. And their words and decree can determine your life. Not believers. Because no matter how mighty anyone is, there is the almighty. Are you hearing me, somebody? You can be a king, but there is the king of kings. You can be a lord, but there is the lord of laws. And a time come when God changes the decrees and the laws of men. Put your hands together and say, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Hallelujah. Look at Daniel 6.20. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually. You, you see the word? You see the word? He said, the God. This is the observation of an unbeliever king. He's an unbeliever. He's a king, an unbeliever. And he observed something. He said, Daniel, so this God you've been serving, going to church continuously, continuously, not every now and then, but continuously, has he been able to deliver you? Look at Daniel's response. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hate. I declare that you will be vindicated in the name of Jesus. I declare your vindication is at hand. God will avenge you speedily. Say yes. And not just that. But the Lord will shut the mouth of your enemies. Let their mouth be shut. Put your hands and say, shut their mouth, Lord. Come on, go ahead. Shut their mouth. Shut their mouth. Shut their mouth. Shut their mouth. I can't hear you. 
push it. Shut their mouth, Lord. Are you clapping? Shut their mouth, Lord. Open your mouth and say something. He's a God of deliverance. Amen. Who delivered, does deliver, shall yet deliver. That settles the matter. Tell two people, that settles the matter. Delivered, does deliver, shall yet deliver. The matter is settled. Bishop Obo, I preach for 10 minutes. Go preach. Bishop James, you two preach for 10 minutes. The matter is settled. Hallelujah. The matter is what? Hallelujah. So God did it for David. He did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He did it for Daniel. Then you come to the book of Genesis chapter 37. Now we are looking at Joseph. Hallelujah. You know about the hatred Joseph faced. You come to Genesis chapter 37, Verse 18 said, the brothers saw him afar off. He said, here come the dreamer. Here come the dreamer. When they saw him afar off, they said, behold, he cometh near unto us. And they, they conspired to slay him. The new King James will say to kill him. But verse 20 said, come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast had devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. Your dream is a target. The enemy, tell somebody the enemy is after your dream. Tell, the, tell them the enemy is after what you stand for. It's after the purpose for which God has raised you. He said, come, let us kill him. And remember, these are his brothers. His own brothers. Sometimes the evil is closer than you can imagine. A man's enemies are those of his own household. Any enemy within your household that is targeting you for evil, today, may the Lord deliver you. May the hand of the Lord be lifted on your behalf. May the Lord deliver you. May the Lord deliver your children from the evil plots of the enemy to take you down, to take you out, to kill you before your time. We decree according to your, the word of the Lord. You will escape every plot of untimely death and premature death. Clap your hands for one minute. Say, I escape. I escape. I escape. I escape. I escape every plot of premature death and untimely death. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and command it. Escape. You will not go down. Their evil plan will not materialize. In the name of Jesus, any group of people planning your head today, may the Lord guarantee your escape. May the Lord guarantee your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 31. The Bible, 21, the Bible said, and Reuben had it. May God place a divine helper who will hear the evil plots of your enemies. Even when you are not there to hear, may God position an angel who will hear and step in and guarantee your deliverance. Reuben had it. God will place an angel who will hear their plot. May their evil plot backfire. It's a Reuben had it, and Reuben delivered Joseph out of their hands. Why? He said, no, 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 let us not kill him. He's our brother. Somebody will speak for you. God will guarantee your deliverance. Somebody will speak for your children. God will guarantee their deliverance. Clap your hand. Say, oh, God, guarantee my deliverance. Guarantee the deliverance of my children. Clap your hand for one minute and command it. Lift up your voice. Command it, command it, command it. Hallelujah. That was the first deliverance. Deliverance from death. 
Then go to verse 24. Verse 24. The Bible said, and they took him and cast him into the pit. They said, you see, initially they said, let's kill him and throw him into a pit. So he would have entered the pit dead. But this time, by the intervention of Reuben, he entered the pit, but he was still alive. You will still be alive. I said, you will still be alive. You shall not be killed in the name of Jesus. You will still be alive. He went into the pit, yes, but he was still alive. And they cast him into the pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. You will not drown. Amen. God will make sure that even the pit will not kill you. Verse 25. They lifted up their eyes and they saw Ishmaelites. Even though the Ishmaelites were not Jews, the Ishmaelites provided another way of escape. The Bible said, they lifted up their eyes and looked and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicy and spices and balm and meh. And they are going out to Egypt. And they said, well, let's take them and sell him. So even though he was bought into slavery, it was deliverance from dying in the pit. God will guarantee your deliverance in the name of Jesus. God will guarantee your deliverance. Tell somebody you will not die. You shall not be killed. You will not die in the pit. In the name of Jesus, God will provide a way of escape. God will provide a way of deliverance. Put your hands together. Say, oh God, guarantee my deliverance. Guarantee the deliverance of my children. Clap your hands and force it, command it, decree it, declare it. You shall not die. Your children will not die. Your dream will not be aborted. Your mission will not be aborted. Your assignment will not be aborted. Clap your hands and enforce it. Rakodala Matasaya. Hallelujah. So he was sold into slavery. And you know what happened in Potiphar's house. He entered Potiphar's house. It was going well. But then Mrs. Potiphar spotted him and decided that I think I want this young man. But Dave, Joseph said, I have not come this far to abort my vision. Any trap that has been set for you to abort your vision, may you escape the trap. I said, may you escape the trap. May you escape the trap. The same God who delivered him from death, the same God who delivered him from the pit, the same God who delivered him from the slave masters, the same God will deliver you from every plot. Every plot to complicate your journey. In the name of Jesus, he landed into prison because he refused to compromise. But that is not the end of the story. The prison will not kill you. I said, well, the prison will not kill you. Do you know that the prison was also an escape? Because by the lies of Mrs. Potiphar, he could have been killed. Because Potiphar was a five-star general. But even there, God showed deliverance. So they kept him in a special cell. A special prison reserved for the political prisoners, and that was divine. Hallelujah. But tell somebody, you came out of the pit, you will come out of the prison. If you came out of the pit, you will come out of the prison. You know the story. They forgot him. They abandoned him, but it was not the end of the story. Guess what? One day, Pharaoh had a dream, and there was nobody to help him out. And they remembered. <laughs> The man who forgot him for two years, he remembered that there is a man in prison. Your gift will be needed. You will be needed. They will remember you. They will call for you. They will send for you. Your day of opportunity is coming. Your day of honor is coming. You will not be abandoned in prison. You are coming out. Tell somebody you are coming out. 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 The same God who delivered you will yet deliver you. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 41 verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself, changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Hallelujah. They went for him what? Hastily. They will look for you with speed. The people who thought you were finished, who thought you were you were, you, were, you, were, you were ostracized and you will not be remembered. They thought your dream would not come to pass. They will look for you. 
I said they will look for you. They will look for you. They will search for you. Hallelujah. They look for him hastily. And guess what? The Bible said they brought him out hastily. He shaved himself. Hey, you will have a new look. I said you will have a new look. Your ragged look will give way to a new look. He changed his garment. You will change your garment one of these days. Because you are coming before royalty. His story changed and your story will change. You know, when you read the scripture, when you continue reading, the Bible said, when after he had given the interpretation, Pharaoh said, we cannot find any man in whom the Spirit of God is to implement what you have brought. If God gave you the wisdom, may the same God empower you to rule. So he became from prisoner to prime minister. In 24 hours, your story can change. I said in 24 hours, tomorrow about this time, may your story change. Tomorrow about this time, may your testimony change. Tomorrow about this time, may your condition change. Put your hands together and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. I like the way David summarized it. When you go to Psalm 105, verse 20, the New Living Translation says, Then Pharaoh sent for him and set him free. The ruler of the nation opened his prison door. The, the general put him in prison, but the highest of highest brought him out. They put you in prison, a king may have put you in prison, but the king of kings will set you free. A lord may have put you in prison, but the lord of lords will set you free. A mighty man may have put you in prison, but the Almighty will set you free. Put your hands together and give the Lord praise. You are coming out. I said you are coming out. Wherever they have chained you, wherever they have kidnapped you, wherever they have hidden you today, by the power and authority of the Word of God, you are coming out. The God who delivered will deliver you. He will bring you out. Wherever your children are trapped, they are coming out. Put your hands together and give him praise. He is the God of deliverance. That is why the Bible said, shall the prey of the mighty be delivered? <laughs> the, 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 the prophet was asking a question, do you think it is possible that the captives will be set free? The prey of the might. Is it possible for them to set free? Is, is it possible? 49. He said, shall the prey be taken from the might? Is it possible at all? And even the lawful captives, is it possible for them to be delivered? The lawful captives are people who are in prison because of their own mistakes. He said, is it possible? If the story ended here, we would have kept wondering. But look at the next verse, 25. He said, <laughs> but... The Archbishop has told you, anytime you hear, but, it means the story is not ended. But, thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall what? They shall what? They shall what? It doesn't matter who kept you bound. It doesn't matter who captured your children. It doesn't matter who captured your business. Today, by the authority of the word of God, we command their deliverance. We command their deliverance. Clap your hands and command their deliverance. He said, they shall be delivered. Then he said, for I will contend with him that content contended with thee. And I will save your children. Say, oh Lord, do it. Save our children. Wherever they are, whatever has kept them bound, today, on the authority of the word, let the God of deliverance deliver the seed of the righteous. Let the God of the deliverance deliver our children. Say, oh God, deliver our children. Save our children. Clap your hands for one minute and enforce it. It doesn't matter who captured them. It doesn't matter who kept them bound. It doesn't matter what is holding them. We command their deliverance. We command their deliverance. We command their deliverance. We command their deliverance because we serve the God of deliverance. Look at the next verse for free. It said, 
and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. They want you dead, they will go in your place. And they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. They want your blood, they will drink their own blood. And he said, and all flesh shall know that the Lord, he, the Lord, is who? Our Savior, our Redeemer, our what? Deliverer. Put your hands together and give him praise. So he said, wherever you are, remember, never forget, remember your past deliverances. Never forget your past deliverances. Never forget where you have come from. Never forget what God has done because he who did it yesterday can do it again today and will do it again tomorrow. The God who delivered you yesterday has the power to deliver you today and will yet deliver you and I. Put your hands together and say, do it, Lord. So Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. He said, anytime you pray, pray in this manner. The Lord lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from the evil one. New King James will tell you, deliver us from the evil one. Any evil personality around you, any evil personality around your children, today, on the authority of God's word, by the power of the word preached, may you be delivered, may your children be delivered, may our sons be delivered, may our daughters be delivered, may our grandchildren be delivered. May the Lord deliver us from evil, from every evil personality, position around you, and position around our children. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together and give him praise. Then he said, everything I'm telling you is my father's message. Amen. Finally, before Bishop James comes quickly, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18, he said what? God will deliver us from what? Every evil work. <laughs> the Lord God will deliver us from every evil work. There is evil in this world, but you shall not be a victim. Your children will not be victims. Our grandchildren will not, not be victims. Put your hands together, give him praise. Let's welcome Bishop James R. Hallelujah. Amen. It is that bishop that reminds me of the scripture that you should be ready always. Because honestly, in cases like this, if you are not ready, you will fall on your face. But let's give the man of God a big hand. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God is a faithful God. Say, so today is the day God promised me to recover every lost ground and give the Lord a big hand. And let's give Papa a big hand for the message he's preached unto us. Hallelujah. Go with me to Acts chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. The whole makeup of the service today reminds me of when I was in Burma camp with my dad. My father was a soldier for 24 years, and I lived in barracks most of my life. And uh, sometimes he comes home with a gun, and when he's, wherever he's going, he's carrying the gun. And I said, oh, daddy, to where? He said, no, no, no. And when you go to the master bedroom, uh, the gun is where, when he's lying down with my stepmother, the gun is where his hand is. He doesn't put the gun where his wife was. So he said, anytime he hears a noise, he should be able to reach the gun immediately and he shouldn't cross his wife. And I pray today that your hand will reach your gun. <laughs> Give the Lord a big gun in your hand. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You should be ready. Let's go to Acts chapter 12. Paruska Pataya. Acts chapter 12, verse 10. Acts chapter 12. And Papa, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, is part of your message and your service you've given us, so we should be able to appreciate. Acts chapter 12, 
Acts chapter 12 went from Acts chapter 2 to chapter 4 to chapter 5, then Acts chapter 12. This is not the first time this Peter guy had been arrested. I want to give you a quick backdrop. Peter had been arrested. He had been released once on his own and at another time by an angel. But this time around in Acts chapter 12, it was an, a titanic situation. Now, in Acts chapter 12, when he was arrested, the Bible tells us that they put him in the midst of 60 soldiers. Now, we are here to pray. But the scripture in Acts chapter 12, verse 10, gives us an understanding. That's what I'm working with. Wow. When they were past the first and the second guard post, you may have a problem you have dealt with before. First time, second time is still not resolved. But today, we are going to find out that you will receive a permanent answer. Oh, your shouting is not enough. I declare today, I take you past your first guard post. I take you past your second guard post. Today, you are going to cross the final situation. And about they came to, now verse 12, chapter 12, verse 10 said, and they came to the iron gate. The iron gate is the last frontier. Hey, child of God, it does not matter what you faced before. First guard post, second guard post. Today you are coming to the final solution. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Satan is a liar. Today the gate must open. Now hold it, hold it. You are going to come across something you've not seen in the Bible before. The iron gate there takes 20 people to shut it. I've done my research. According to research, Josephus, the, 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 the Jewish history, he said 20 men opened the iron gate and 20 men closed it. So there was no chance for Peter to go out. God is looking for your most difficult situation. So today the Bible tells us that he came to the iron gate. Uh, and we have a prayer. If you have ever prayed, today is the day. He said, and they came to the iron gate. I don't know what you are coming to. Your marriage, your family. No, come on, let me go to the other side. Your marriage, your family, your business. I declare today you have come to it. And you are not afraid you will face it. Give the Lord a shout. And they came. They came, they came, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city. And it, uh, and it opened on its own accord. Lift up your hand. Something must open today. Lift up your hand. Now, now, let me give you a little education before we pray. It opened by its own accord. It means automatic. Because the 20 people who lock it are not there. It is not every time somebody will help you. When the other people are not there, what would you do? Here it says, the gate opened by itself. The 20 helpers are not there. So it is from the word automatic. And in the Greek, if you check, it's automatic. 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 What men have shut, God can open it. They shut your marriage, they shut your business, they shut your career. I declare God is here. Today is the final day. Today is freedom day. Lift up your hand. Ah, oh, Sagadabaya. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Ghana had independence 57. I'm here to announce today is Freedom Day. For your marriage, for your business, for your career, I declare freedom. Give the Lord a shout. Matula Kata Shataya. I declare freedom. Let the iron gate open. Lift up your hand. Back off a little, take one step back. Today, something must open. What for what bread? What bread? What bread? How long can you wait? 
Once the gate is locked, you are waiting for 20 men who are not coming. How long? Let that shift to automatic. Lift up your hand. Pray as if you lost your head. Today, you must go home with an open gate. Lift up your hand. Say, right now. No, come on. I'm not coming back here. Say, right now. Right now. I declare. I shift from manual to automatic. I shift my gears of prayer from manual to automatic. I declare anything in my family, in my life that is shut, my marriage, my business, my career, my womb, my career, my health, I declare right now the iron gate, the iron gate in my father's house, my mother's house. Let it open. Nah, 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 nah. Clap your hand and pray. Well, Sam, hey, 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 clap your hand and pray. Something must open. Are you praying? Ya la 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 Shift, la 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 Force the door open. Push, push, push the gate. Shift to automatic. Something must open. Today is Freedom Day. Your marriage, your business, your career, your family. Pray, 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 pray. Clap your hand and pray. Are you praying? Before I resume my sight, lift up your hand. Lift it up. The iron gate that leads to the city. Lift up your hand. Lift it up. Lift it up. Papa is not asking us to do this just for the fun of it. No. Something is on the line. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Give me the scripture. Lift it up. Lift it up. How long can you be in prison? The fact that you are walking around doesn't mean you are not in prison in something. Poverty is a prison. Sickness is a prison. It leads to the city. Iron gate that leads to the city. If you want to go to the city, something must open. Lift up your hand. What may be my prison may not be your prison. Was Peter not born again? Peter was born again. Peter was the leader, and yet he was incarcerated. He was in prison. And you sit there and tell me, eh, I'm a child of God. Oh, please stop it. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Say right now. No, give me some power. Say right now. I declare any iron gate in my life, my father's house, my mother's house, I break it up. One more time. We are shifting from manual to what? Automatic is God. There are manual cars and there are automatic cars. So right now, today, by the prayer we are praying, by the direction of the Archbishop, I am shifting you into God's position because God works by automatic. What 20 people cannot do one angel can do it. Mount Sasu. Say right now. Oh, no, no, no. I don't like the level. Say right now. I declare my marriage, my family, my ministry, my health, my career. I declare any iron gate facing me right now. I open it by the finger of God. Now. Nah. 
now, now, I declare by automation, let the iron gate open now, now, I am going to the city, now, clap your hand and pray. Clap your hand and pray. Today is a special day for you. Freedom, 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 freedom. We are. clap your hand and pray. I shall not die in prison. I shall not die single. I shall not die barren. I am going out. I am free. I am free. Lift up your hand. I'm done. Lift up your hand. In the name of the Father. Bishop, you are not done yet. You are not done yet. Oh, I'm not 10 minutes. No. Bishop, the iron have feasibility unless you get to the city. From manual to automatic. Aha, the iron gate is the feasibility. You can't be seen. You can't be known. You are limited. Yeah, you are, the iron gate is what is keeping people from becoming visible. Jesus. All this struggle is the... Finish the iron gate, Bishop. You are not finished. Lift up your hand. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 4. And then when you super tattoo. Now, we are calling for God's power. It was not Judas who delivered Peter. You need divine intervention. <laughs> Lift up your hand. There is what man can do. And there is what God can do. Habakkuk. His brightness was like light. He had rays flashing from his hand. And there his power was hidden. God's power is hidden in his hands. Lift up your hand. Lift it up. You heard what Papa said. Your future is not in the prison. Your marriage, I, I've not had anybody do a wedding in prison. There are things, it's a limited space. Escobar and Co, where they live, is space, small space. You move left, you move right, you, you stay there. That's all, no, 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 today you are coming out. No, no, I stand here as a servant of God. By the witness of the oil in the house. I declare today your freedom day. Give the Lord a shout, freedom. When I declare, before we pray again, when I declare, 1957 we had freedom. But you are not. You still carry problems. Lift up your hand. I declare today, by the oil upon the life of the archbishop and the grace that is in this house, I declare today Freedom Day. Give the Lord a jump, freedom. Now, lift up your hand. Our final prayer. Lift it up, lift it up. You know what you need. Lift it up. You need only one visitation from God. Why do people see you and call you her when they know your name? Grown man, they call you her. They don't respect you. When married people are talking and go, they give you a church. Married people are talking, you're also talking. Lift up your hand. Because somebody will give you a lift, they go in the opposite direction because you have been begging for lift. Lift up your hand. Your landlord and unbeliever has been bullying you. Because of you, you get up in the night and you come at dawn. You don't even stay in the house because you can't pay rent. Lift up your hand. Today, our target is the iron gate. What 20 people have locked, one angel will open. And after that, Papa will come and pray a prophetic prayer over you. That any iron gate... There is no record anybody came out except Peter. People died there. 
Papa will pray a prayer. I'll beg him, prophetic prayer. Any iron gate that killed your father, killed your mother, you, Kojo Minta, you, Chocho, you, today, you are going free. No, something is in my heart. The service has changed. Lift up your hand. Something has shifted. Take a paper. With the respect of the actual, take a paper. 2024. Take a paper. I'm going to show you something. God works. Write your name and one thing you want to get out of the iron gate of. One thing. Uh, all Sunday services are not the same. That sounds like orthodoxy. That sounds like formalism. If you believe God is here, and what we are doing is from the Archbishop, from the Spirit of God, write on a piece of paper, drop it here, drop it at the front. What is the iron gate you want to come out of? For five minutes, you will remember today's service and what Archbishop has done. Write your name and just... Don't, don't, don't say 20. One, we are shifting to automatic. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Put it here. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah. It's not even 12. Put it here. And remember what you wrote, 2024, Fatu Heya. Hey, and go back to your seat and wait for the Archbishop. Hey, my friend, put it where I told you. Good. Right. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. You hear the song. That's prophetic on it. So bring it, come and put it down. And just go and wait for me. And Archbishop will come. Put it down. Put it down. Today is your day of deliverance. You will not die in prison. Bring it. Hey, my friend, hey, hey. Put it down. Put it down and go back. Your enemies will know you are a believer. And go back. Go back. Go back. Get ready. Get back. Go back. Go back. Something must shift. Something must give way. Oh yeah. Karatakaya. Karatakaya. It's coming. It's coming. I can see angels all over the place. I can see angels. I can see angels. Yay. Sing it. Sing it. Today is the day you have been waiting for. You will not die poor. You will not die single. You will not die in prison. But sing it. My God, my God. My God, my God. Jesus, Jesus, let God arise, Jesus, something has shifted, yes, something has shifted, and don't go, just stay there, put it down, go back, do it, follow the voice of God, the iron gate, the iron gate must open. You will not die in prison. Ah. Yeah, 
yes, yes, yes. I will not die. I will not die broke. I will not die poor. I will not die. Shandala. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Jesus. Jesus is here. Jesus, 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 your hand. Everybody stand up. Lift up your hand. Stand up and I mean it. All days are not the same. To die in prison is a decision you choose. I'm helping you to get out. Lift up your hand. There is a prayer I cannot pray. Papa will come and pray. Your future is here. Whether you want to die in prison, James died. James died in the same prison. Lift up your hand. Your future is here. Your marriage, your career, your babies. 20 men have logged it and you are sleeping. What the hell is that? You are sitting there watching TV. Lift up your hand. You think you are doing good. 
You are helping me. Lift up your hand. 20 men have logged it. The same problem killed your ancestors. Lift it up. Karuski. 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 Lift up your hand. Where's the oil? Don't open it, Papa. Oil. Lift up your hand. Papa. Bishop James. Yes, sir. Listen, don't set me up. This meeting is out of my hands. Oh. <laughs> what is happening here is not Papa. This is the Holy Spirit. So finish it. Okay. Lift up your hand. Let me remove my jacket. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Somebody had died before Peter. Your deliverance is based on your revelation. Lift up your hand. You, name you. Lift up your hand. You are going to pray a violent prayer. And this is the miracle. The angel that set Peter free is the angel that killed Herod. Because the word say, and he smote Peter to wake him up. And he smote Herod and killed him. We are changing it. The thing that want to kill you, let it go and kill your killers. Yes. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. We are not, we know God for ourselves. The Bible says, and he smote Peter and woke him up. A prayer no. Smote him and woke him up. And he said, and he smote Herod and killed him. Today, I don't care where you come from. Return to sender. Lift up your hand. You can sit down. You can hang out with your boyfriend. You can put your hand on your husband's neck. It's not my trouble. Today, fire for fire. I am at home and you arrested me. I am returning the goodwill. The angel that smote Peter and woke him up is the angel that smote one angel. Today, we are returning the angel to the enemy. Say right now. Oh, give me power. Say right now. I declare any man, any woman, Desiring my head by imprisonment, I declare fire for fire, fire for fire, 2024, fire for fire. Nah, nah, nah. Clap your hand and pray. Clap your hand and pray. Do it, do it, do it. Push, push. Something must die for your freedom. Finally, lift up your hand. I declare today a freedom day. Whatever has incarcerated you, whatever arrested your ancestors, whatever has arrested your life, and you are behind the iron gates, 
and you cannot enjoy the freedom of others. Your marriage, your business, your career, your future. I am here by the authority of God to declare today, you are free. <laughs> Lift up your hand. We are done. I am holding the handle of the iron gate. And I declare, Herod must die. God said, I kill and I make alive. I cannot kill anybody. Lift up your hand. I hold the hands of the iron gate prophetically to your marriage, to your business, to your babies, to your future. And I declare today, today, what is today's date? Today, 14th April, the year of our Lord, 2024, what 20 men have shot by prophecy, I declare I open the gate. I open the gate and I declare you are free. You are free. You are free. You are free to marry. You are free to travel. Walk out, walk out, walk out. You are free, walk out. You are free, walk out. Walk out, go, 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 go. You are free, go. Go and marry. Go and prosper. Go, go, go. I heard Papa saying, the program is out of his hands. Lift up your hand. Something has shifted. I declare by faith, the iron gate is open. In the name of Jesus. Bishop Boda, I come. Put your hand on my shoulder. On the behalf of the Archbishop, as the set man of this house, by the multitude of God's grace and the anointing upon his life, I declare this day, let the enemy hear. Let the power of the enemy hear. Your father's house and your mother's house. I declare by this anointing that the iron gate is open. You will marry. You will travel. You will prosper. You will succeed. You will prevail. By this oil, the power of God shall be manifested in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a shout. of peace. Hallelujah. Please go back to Acts chapter 12 verse 10. And then jump quickly to 11. Uh, it's the same message. Go to 11. And when 
Peter had come to himself. You will come to yourself. I said you will come to yourself. When Peter came to himself, he said, now I know for certain that the Lord has done what? He sent his angel and he has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the Jewish people. God has sent his angel today. He has delivered you from Herod and from all the expectations of your enemies. Put your hands together and give the Lord praise. You may be seated. We welcome the Bishop Emeritus James Sarr to take our offering for the day, tithe and offering. Um, on a day like this, there's no struggle. You bring the offering here, no basket. You are sealing your miracle. You assume that God has given you a gift to what Danasi. Take your offering. And it should not be a regular offering. Raising money, oh, I'll start with 1,000, 2,000. They are not raising offering. It is a seed of appreciation. They will sing. You will dance and put the money here. I've taken my money. I was going to do something with it. I'm going to sow a seed for myself. You think I'm, things I'm not believing? I'm believing things for, for, for God, from God. Take it. Take it. Raising money. Ah, we can raise money. Take it. Take it. Okwabrencha para woman mo. If God has done something for you, you should thank him. I want to say, I want to give a thousand. I want to give two thousand. To thank God, even before I see it. How much would you spend on your wedding? How much would it take to buy a ticket? I'm putting my money here. Give me a, a offer. A, take it. Lift it up. Thousand, two thousand, three thousand. You know what God, you know what you are believing God for. Lift it up. It's not a normal offering. And tight. Tight should come for it. Okay, they, they will, uh, should I take the offering first? Okay, together, you come with your tithe all together. Lift it up, please. So, Bishop, I want to give a thousand. I want to give two thousand. I want to give five thousand. Bishop, I want to break the bank. I want to give ten thousand. You won't go to hell for giving that amount. It will be a memorial the day God gave me my miracle. This was my appreciation. Lift up your hand. Be spontaneous. Nobody had planned it. Father, I declare by the power of your spirit that 2024 we shall see miracles we shall see wonders and we shall see your glory what you did for Peter we declare you have done it for us and we are thanking you in the name of Jesus hallelujah those who came with your tithes can you come forward quickly can you come forward quickly with your tithes? Come forward quickly. Come forward quickly with your tithes. Remember here, men who die receive it, but the matter is settled. It said, he who lives forever. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 8 is the one who keeps the record. There's no controversy. He who lives forever is the one who keeps the records. Remember your offering is to be released into the offering bowl or onto the altar. It doesn't go back into your bag. Hallelujah. Lift up your tithe. Father, by our tithe, we command embargoes lifted. By our tithe, we command restrictions destroyed. We command every devourer and waster arrested. And we command our heavens open in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please drop your tithe on the altar. Thank you very much. God bless you. May this week be your week of financial surprises and testimonies. May this week be our week of financial miracles. May God change your story. May God blow your mind. May God increase everything that concerns you in the name of Jesus. Let's welcome the choir as we give.
What a wonderful service it has been this afternoon at Action Chapel International Prayer Cathedral, 37 Spintex Road. Amen. It's time for tithes and offering. And as the bishop has prayed, um, the giving channels will be on the screen. And so if you are connecting from outside the country, the online giving channels are on the platform on your screens at the moment. Please cast your seed with gladness and let's trust God that in this season there will be a bountiful harvest of all the seeds that you have sown in Jesus' precious name. Let's cast our seed with gladness. Please look to the screen for the giving channels. Giving is still ongoing. Giving is still ongoing. The giving channels are on the screen. The giving channels are still on the screen. So cast your seed. Hallelujah. Is the Lord good? Has the Lord been good to us this morning? Then please put your hands together and give him praise. Amen. And let's thank God one more time for the life of our Papa, for bringing us a word in season, the God of deliverance. And let's thank God for the Bishop Emeritus, James Kwekusa, for his support. Hallelujah. Let's bow down our heads briefly. Maybe you're in the service today and you don't know Jesus. And you're wondering, what are these people going on and on and on and about? We're going on and on because we have a Savior who delivered us in the past, who we believe has the power to deliver us today, and he will yet deliver us into the future. Amen? If you're here and you say, I want to know this God for myself. I want to be born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. The Bible said the books will be opened on that day. And anybody whose name is not found in the book of life shall go into hell. You don't want to go to hell. If there anybody here who says, I want to give my life to Jesus, if you lift up your right hand quickly, we'll pray with you. Anybody here, I want to make peace with God. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be on God's side. If your hand is up anywhere, can you please stand quickly so we pray with you? Anybody here? 
Anybody here, I need Jesus. I want to make peace with God. I don't want to go to hell. I want to join the winning team. Anybody here? Anybody here? If your hand is up, can you stand quickly so we pray with you? If you're standing anywhere, can you come down? Can you come forward quickly? Anybody here? Can you come? Can you come? Don't be shy. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. All other decisions are important, but this one has eternal consequence. Thank you very much. Can you lift up your head? Talk to somebody for a minute. Ask them, excuse me, are you born again? Talk to somebody. It's the house of God. Ask them, excuse me, are you born again? And demand an answer. If they are born again, thank God for their lives. If they are not sure, tell them, I'll go forward with you if need be. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together and give God praise. Let's welcome Minister Vicky to continue with the rest of the program. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Such sweet spirit, such sweet fellowship. I'm so thankful to God that I came to church here today. Go to God for the lives of everyone that is here. And he quoted the words of a setting song I knew years ago. It says that he didn't bring us to leave us. He didn't build his home in us to move away. He didn't lift us up to let us down. He didn't teach us to swim to let us drown. Indeed, the God of deliverance has shown up. The God of deliverance has shown up. And I'm so thankful to God. And I just want to welcome every one of you, but especially our brethren who have been here, who are here today for the first time. If you are visiting us here today for the first time, maybe from outside Accra, from another church, from outside the country, wherever, if today is your first time, may I, on behalf of His Eminence, the Archbishop, welcome you all to ACI. Amen. You are welcome. And may I go further and ask you to show by hand if you are that person. If you're here for the first time, Papa wants to welcome you. Oh, brother, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, I can see the hands popping up. Can I further ask you to just please stand up and join me here? I just want to say a few words. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's good to still have you with us in church today. If you are joining us for service for the first time today, online or on TV, would like to get to know you and like to build a relationship, a bridge to a relationship that is well established. We have our call center information and prayer line numbers on the screen. Please feel free to call. We have dedicated ministers on standby to speak to you about the church. Amen. Also, as part of onboarding all first timers we have our online uh, membership form on the main action chapel website actionchapel.net please fill the form fill the form and let's get to know you have personal information about you that we can reach out to you our call center is open always you can reach us anytime for counseling for prayer you can reach us for coaching any need you may have as far, as far as pastoral experience is concerned, you can call the call center lines, which will be on your screen in a moment. Amen. And so we thank God for bringing you to service today. If you responded to the altar call that was done by the bishop and you received Christ Jesus, would want to get to know that as well in your in, in filling out the online form, please indicate that you gave your life to Jesus and we'll be glad to take you through um, discipleship classes that will help you be established as a child of God, where you stand on your own two feet in the kingdom of God. Amen. We bless the Lord for how far he's brought us in the past few weeks. There have been many testimonies coming through to our call center and through our social media handles, if you have a, a testimony to share, you can please share that through our call center as well or through our social media handles. The team will pick it up and will read it out so that the world can celebrate with you 
on what God is doing in your life. One particular testimony came out that was quite fantastic in that a lady invited a friend of hers who had been involved in an accident about five weeks ago. Uh, she had a neck problem, so was wearing a neck brace. She invited her to church in the morning dominion hour. And while Papa was making declarations and praying, uh, by the time service was over, the pain in her neck had totally disappeared. Amen. And so as you tap in into service, as you join us, may that be your portion also, where God is delivering you on every side. Amen. In addition to her testimony, she mentioned that Papa mentioned in, 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 in the prayer session that the veil that is covering is lifted. And she believed it. She took God's word. She took the prayer of the Archbishop and she stepped out in faith and she went to watch a football match. Amazingly, while in queue, someone found her and gave her a VIP ticket to go and watch the match for free. May that be your portion also. May every veil as declared by, by the, His Eminence, the Archbishop, may that veil catch fire. And may your helpers find you speedily in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So do share your testimonies with us. We'd like to know what God is doing in your life so we can celebrate with you and we can rejoice with you. Again, our call center numbers will be on your screen. Please reach out. Let us know where you are watching us from would like to know where you're watching us from amen now let's turn our attention to a few books that have been launched by his eminence the archbishop that will be a blessing to you uh, let's go through it S service is still ongoing we'll be back shortly with the archbishop to pray for us and to pronounce a benediction over us let's go back to the books shortly is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. It's good to be with you again. Thanks for tuning in. Enforcing the Prophetic is one of my latest book, part two, that I believe will impact your life. I was talking to one of my spiritual daughters the other day. She called me and said that uh, she reads her Bible every night before she goes to bed. And I said, that is good, but not enough. And she said, why? I said, reading or studying of the scriptures brings about understanding, but reading is not enough. After you have read and you have acquired understanding, you have to put into action the understanding you have acquired and that is why enforcing prophetic decrees is very 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 critical and important the word of god is prophecy the word of god is the decrees of god and they don't work until we proclaim it so enforcing god's decree is proclaiming and declaring with your mouth what you have read and the bible said i watch over my word to perform it jeremiah 1 12 just reading the word is not enough. You got to release it with your mouth and by your mouth. Faith is released by the mouth and not by your head, not by thinking or imagining. It's by your mouth you release. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mightest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then shalt thou make thy way prosperous this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth so anytime you open your mouth you should be proclaiming decreeing and declaring what is written and what you have read so get the book enforcing the prophetic decrees of god the word of god are prophetic decrees and God is counting on you and I to declare it, to decree it. Say something in Jesus' name by getting this book to bless you. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Um, today I want to talk to you about the importance of one of the books uh, 
I have released among the many others that I believe will impact your life and will bless you. It's very, very critical in the times we live in for us to appreciate and understand process. The difference between the first Adam and the last Adam was process. The first Adam was made overnight. He didn't go through process. The last Adam went through process and learned obedience to the many things he suffered by process. When you don't go through process, you do not appreciate and know the value of a thing. The value of gold has everything to do with the process it went through before it was brought out. And if you look at the difference between King Saul and David, Saul was made king overnight. David went through process from the first anointing to the third anointing was 17 years. The first anointing was before his brethren, second anointing before Judah, third anointing before all of Israel, process. And that gave him longevity. And everything about life is about process. When you don't go through process, you have no understanding and value of a thing and what you have. So it's very, very important for you to get this book. Stop fighting the process. Go through the process. You will come out at the other side, a better person, a better individual. People who don't go through process and come into prominence are disaster. Money without purpose is disaster. Power without purpose is disaster. And so get understanding, this book, don't fight the process. Go through the process will cause you to have the keys that are necessary to guarantee your longevity. God bless you. Praise God is good to be with you and I'm Archbishop Nick and today I feel very strongly impressed by the Spirit of God to share with you uh, reasons for putting together some of these books and materials that I believe will impact your life, like understanding the prophetic. I believe that one of the reasons why the prophetic has come under a lot of attack and under a lot of confusion all across the nations of the world is because of lack of understanding. One of the main things through my observation over the years and the decades in ministry is the misunderstanding between the office and the functions of Old Testament prophets and New Testament prophets. Now under the Old Testament prophet, because the Holy Spirit hadn't then been given, we were led and directed by prophets under the Old Testament dispensation. In the New Testament dispensation, primarily we are led by the inner witness and by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And so I put together this material to help you see and understand the difference between Old Testament prophets and New Testament prophet. With this understanding, you will have illumination, clarity, and it will remove every misunderstanding. Whenever you see misunderstanding, is lack of understanding. So understanding has the ability to dismiss misunderstanding. I want you to get hold of this book, Understanding the Prophetic. It will dismiss every misunderstanding, confusion and doubt you have about the prophetic. The prophetic is real. I'm a, I'm a product of the prophetic. Please get this book of understanding the prophetic. It will bless you. God bless you. Bible say, buy the truth and sell it not. God bless you. Paul said, who delivered? Does deliver, shall yet deliver. So it does not matter. It does not matter what is ahead of us. It does not matter what the enemy has intended or programmed or predicted. I came to announce to somebody, irrespective of the contradictions and the odds, and whatever is coming against you, whether it's political or financial or spiritual, it doesn't matter what it is. The God 
that has kept you alive now. The God that has preserved you up to now, he's capable and he's able, he's able to yet deliver you from whatever is ahead of you. Most times people are of the view that if you are righteous, you shouldn't face anything, you shouldn't go through anything, everything should be beautiful, everything should be nice and quiet. It's a deception. It's a deception, I'm telling you. It's a wrong way of saying things and looking at things. You will go through a lot. The Bible says, for by much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of heaven. So the fact that you are a believer, you do right, and you take the stand for God, you will go through things. But when the Bible says, but means the, it's not yet over. But means the enemy doesn't have the final word concerning your life. It, it doesn't matter what the enemy has said, what has been prophesied, and the dreams you've been having, God still has the final word over your life. The flower fades, the grass withereth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I don't know what you are standing on, but I'm standing on Christ, the solid rock. All other ground is sinking sand. When people are gifted, don't forget what I'm telling you, when people are gifted and anointed, tomorrow evening. Number two, please note that the breakfast event targets entrepreneurs, professionals, leaders, and emerging leaders who are committed to learning how to build businesses and careers that contribute to kingdom building and people who are committed to enduring, enduring um, the, and remaining impactful in our world. You want something that will endure, something will impact the world, something that will contribute to the kingdom of God, and you are the person who needs to be in this meeting. Amen. Shall we please stand? Thank you for your attention. If you're traveling this week, please come forward. Let's cover you before you go. Are you blessed? Tell somebody your God is a God of deliverance, and he will surely make a way for you. For today is your day of freedom. Hallelujah. You're traveling this week, please come. Let's worship as we invite the Bishop Emeritus, Joseph Nyakwentri, to please close us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Action National, a place where the people... Psalm 44.4. Let's say it together. Ready, go. Oh, you clapping? You clapping? Good. Say it again. Say it again. These deliverance, deliverances that you have received is for you, is for your wife, is for your husband, is for your children your grandchildren and their children and all generations after you because the one who has commanded deliverances is the eternal God everlasting father the prince of peace 
when he said, let there be light, light, I have no choice but to appear in darkness. Now he has commanded your deliverances. It will not stop. It will not end. It continues. Deliverances. Deliverances. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Your health. Your finances. Your family. The work of your hands. All that you live for. Serving the Lord, the Lord Himself, Himself, have commanded your deliverances and anything He created is subject to the Creator. Therefore, all respond to His command for your. Deliverances. It do not stop. It will not end. It continues. It continues. Affect you. Affect your home. Affect your marriage. Affect all that you do and live for. In the land of the living. Therefore, let no man let no woman, let no spirit, let no circumstances stand the way of the command that has come from the creator himself. As you celebrate, rejoice, and enjoy today because he himself has commanded your deliverances. You have received, you have received, you have received, you have received the commanded blessing. And nothing can stop it. Because he loves you. He cares for you. He's concerned. He hears your cries, your tears. And he has come to help you receive. Receive and let all circumstances respond to the command from the Creator Himself for His people to be free. You are 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 free. When the Son has set you free, you are free. Indeed. Therefore, let travelers be kept by the power of God in the air, on the land, on water. Let them have peace, protection, safety, and security. Let them go and succeed in their journey and come back with a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. As you live here, let no thought, no imagination, no whispering interfere with that which he has given to you, your liberty, your freedom, your safety, your covering, your joy, that all that you've been looking for, waiting for, crying for, for days, he said today, is yours. Take it. Enjoy it. Thank him for it. He has responded from his holy heaven. He has come down to do you good. Because if he doesn't do it, no one has what it takes to do what only he can do for you. Rejoice and celebrate his goodness in the land of the living. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. It affects all your movements. And it gives you what you have not asked for. He decided just to favor you, honor you, do you good, 
from his own bowels of mercy and compassion. Be surrounded, be covered. Let this crowd of glory never depart from you. Wherever they say no to you, now they will say yes to you. Wherever you were rejected, they will welcome you. And people will say sorry because they were being used. They didn't know what they were doing. Now their eyes are open. They have come to themselves and they will respond because the command is not coming from any human being. It's coming from the creator himself. The creator himself. He knows what to do, how to do, when to do at all times. You are blessed. And this blessing takes you beyond your days in the land of the living. Amen. Hallelujah. What a great blessing to have had you in service with us today. We look forward to seeing you joining us next week for our services. Remember, our call centers are open. Lines will be on the screen. You can reach us at any time to let us know if you have a testimony or you have a prayer request or you need help with counseling or deliverance. Please reach out to us. We are here all the time. Be blessed. And may your homes be blessed. As declared by our Father, let everything that has been declared, let it come to pass in your life this week. And have a testimony. We'll see you again another time. God bless you. Amen.